as you can see, we got a bunch of snow. And with all this snow, I can finally work on something, or actually put something on this quad that I've wanted to do for a little while now. Good new, welcome back to New Hampshire Vintage. My name is Wyatt and a little out of breath just from dragging these things from the back of the shop. But we have here a 2008 Player Sportsman and I got this quad back in the summer from a family friend. And when I got the quad, it came with these tracks and I figured we just got dumped on with uh, 15 inches of snow. I figured no better time to uh, put them on and try them out. Now I do have a new camera, so audio might be a little eh, or video might be a little, I'm kind of working out the kinks. And I kind of figured this would be probably the best video to learn the new camera on. So let's uh, give you a quick little tour on this thing. It's not really anything special. And we will start working on getting tracks on and then going for a little rip through the yard with that deep snow, see how it actually works. Kind of like a, how to put them on and review video. Let's get started. So here it is. 2008 Polaire Sportsman. You could see uh, where he had a plow on this thing and you could see where it was going up and down all the time. He bought it brand new in 2008, used it for goose hunting and plowing his driveway. And that was about it. So I ended up scooping this thing up for 4,000 bucks. It has 100 hours on it. It's in really clean shape for the year. As you can see, there's no cracks in the plastics. It was always stored in the garage. Those are the original tires. I still have plenty of tread on them. Rims are in good shape. Let's see underneath. She's very clean. Has a trailer hitch so you can tow the bob house out in the winter. Kind of the main reason why I got this thing, to be honest with you. And yeah, I mean, she's she's pretty clean. And it also came with these. So these are uh, tracks that he ordered when he got it brand new. They're a little dirty, but they do have really good tread on them, as you can see. He seemingly used them like once or twice, and just never really had the need to use them in deep snow. You can still see it has the little nubs on it. They're not smoked out like a lot of them. The only issue that came with these things is they sat in a jet sled. So all these brackets, you can see were all rusted really bad. So I took my time over the summer and I sanded them all down, repainted them, got brand new stainless steel bolts and hardware locking nuts, new heim joints, and just went through these things, re-greased everything. Now these bogies probably should be, uh, the bearings should probably be redone, but we're not going to do that. So let's, uh, I don't know, start with the front or the back. I guess I'll start with the front maybe, and then the back might be a little easier. So we'll probably end up using the little gantry system I have and we'll lift the front right up so we can uh, get these tires off. Now that we got the quad up in the air, we can uh,
All right, so you're gonna have to make sure you have the right track, obviously, for the front and rear. You can see on the fronts, they have that little bow going up, or you can see that. So that's how you know it's the front, because it wants to climb the snow. And then the rears, which actually, these are backwards. So this one would be the back. You can see you have that little curve. So also you can tell by the brackets too, you'll see the brackets are hooked on and those go inside. So what we're gonna do is take this, take this cover off, which seems like these three bolts there. And then once we get that off, this should mount right up with the, uh, we gotta get this little bracket off too. And that bracket kind of sits like right here to keep it in place. We also need to join this up. <clears throat> guys and show you what I did so this needs to be actually pushed up just a smidge more you can see the holes here need to line up with the holes where that uh, that CV axle or CV CV axle cover was but if you look you can see there's a bracket on the top here one side is at an angle that goes to the back then the straight side goes in the front, as you kind of see the orientation. And I just have everything in loosely. That's why it's off. But inside here, you'll see a little slanted mounting, I don't know, kind of like a, not really a bracket. Can you see it? See it in there? That side going up hits the edge of this control arm and it keeps this side coming up in. Now, I still have this heim joint loose with the uh, with the bolt there. Um, I kind of lined it up the best I can, but I think when they're both on there, I'm gonna have to take that back off and adjust that so this is at a certain angle. So they're pretty much straight. Um, I had to take the old one off because it was rusted. So I don't really know exactly how far out it was. I didn't measure beforehand. That's just kind of my mistake. So yeah, that one's on. I'm gonna tighten all these up and see if that pushes this up. And we'll move on to the next side and pretty much just copy it. Really the hardest part was just trying to lift this heavy track up to meet up with the uh, studs on the hub there. You can see in here, I got one, one in, the other ones aren't in yet, just to keep this thing in place. Looks pretty good though. I tell you what, once these are on, they're staying on all winter. I ain't switching back and forth because this is a little bit of a pain. Wonder if the new quads uh, make it a little bit easier for you. Okay, so you can see there, pretty straight. They have a very, very slight, would that be toe out or toe in? Either way, they're kind of, they're going like, well, they're going like this. So they're kind of slightly facing that way. It's very, very tiny, but as you can see, we got uh, Shane here. He's doing some work to his assault. But 
I have those heim joints screwed in almost all the way. I'm thinking I might have to, let me just show you, adjust these steering linkages. Maybe that'll push this out to bring in the nose, but we'll do that after. I wanna get the uh, rears on. I don't know if it's gonna make a huge difference having them slightly bowed out like that, cause it's not like I'm going down the highway with this thing. It's just gonna be in snow and you don't go fast with tracks on. So let's uh, get the cover plates on and we're gonna move to the rear. What do you got going on here, Shane? Oh, all sorts of fun stuff. All sorts of fun stuff? Yeah, we're gonna have a good time. <laughs> gonna have a good time, I like it. What do you got planned for this thing? Oh, gonna put a can on it so I can piss yeah. some people off. Yeah. And then, uh, high facts probably, and yeah. a new belt. New belt, nice. Yeah, good to go. Well, a little, uh, little, little preseason maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> now that we actually got dumped on with snow. Sweet deal. All right, let's get back to, uh, let's get back to the quad here. Hands on. Let's see what she sounds like. So after 20 minutes of swearing, 18 cuts, we uh, got this track on. Now, going underneath here, ow, going underneath here, you'll see there's two nuts here, two bolts facing that way. So those two nuts are a little like you tight bolt that goes around the lower part of the control arm. So that slides over and that's this guy underneath. But keep it loose, cause, and this is where I, luckily Shane was here. 
we had to lift this track up and down and where these bolts are it's hard to see well if i show you on this side there's two holes here and when the plate comes up one bolt and one bolt so the issue is though there's a spacer on the other side because these are sticking because these are sticking out so you got to have the bolt the plate the spacer and then and then you got to try to drop the spacer in and get the bolt on now what might make this a little easier if, if i get longer bolts and the bolt kind of sticks out a little bit then i could just start everything and then just get it on with the deep socket but i just literally replaced what was on here so for future reference i am going to find longer bolts for the back and but for now for the time being since i have help and since uh we're pretty much almost done i'm just gonna struggle with this side you also need to take off this uh cover it's no big deal it just gives you better access to the holes so yeah um also too maybe i could also cut this a little bit bigger at some point but it'll probably just be easier just to get a longer bolt so time to struggle with the other side and then we are all set to try it out. Okay, some time has passed and we have a messed up bracket. So let me bring you in here and show you. So I already tried heating it up a little bit and I'm going to keep heating it up so that you can see it's all bent out of shape. See all that? So you're trying to line it up and it was not wanting to line up. So took it back off, took everything apart, and saw that that thing was bent. I don't know what happened in the past. Maybe he smoked a rock or something, but we're gonna have to try to bend that as best we can. So, got uh, two sledges, and these are just those longer bolts I was talking about. And we are gonna put this right on the concrete, use my torches here, See if we can beat that thing senseless. So before I really bend it back, I have another idea. We're gonna place this thing right here. And we're gonna have old Guido back over it, just till it hits the end there. And, and I know it's heavy, so we'll see if this kind of bends it at least flat enough, where then we can kind of work on it a little bit. So let's try it. It's the worst gonna happen, right? That's a lot better. There's just a little, you can see it right there. So if we could push that that way a smidge, and then if we can, let's see if I can show you guys here. If we could push this side down, that should straighten it out just enough where it doesn't need to be perfect, but it's a lot better already than what it was. So let's see if we can now kind of work it a little bit.
Okay, I got my paint booth here. Got some rust -oleum. Got a little bit left in this can, so I'm just gonna retouch this up. that dry for a little bit, flip her over, and then we can throw it back on the quad. Goes to show you that uh, little projects that you think are gonna only take 30 minutes to an hour, take a lot longer, especially when you buy used stuff. Oh well, that's how you learn, right? No, I'll never learn. My buddy Chris ended up getting a phaser actually in pretty good shape. We parked it for a little bit and we noticed as an oil spot so we're gonna have to dive into this and figure out what's going on. It needs the carbs cleaned when he uh, when he bought it he thought it was running pretty good and then we took it for a drive around a then we took it for a ride around the yard and she has a bog bad one. I'm just trying to see where that oil is coming from. Trying to use the uh, camera light here just to see if I can find that oil leak. Just trying to kill time here while that bracket's drying. I don't know though. Gonna have to, we gotta pull the carbs anyway, so if I can get the carbs off, then I can get behind there and see if it's a line behind the oil tank, but I don't know, I, I don't see anything. You could see a little spot down there by that steering linkage, but I don't know. This thing needs a good vacuum too. Got it for 700 bucks. I think that's a pretty good deal. Track smoked on it like the uh, phaser, phaser I have, but it's all right. Look at how shiny she is. Seat's in good shape. And it still has the choke. That's like a rare commodity for these things now. It seems like everybody bypasses those and the oil tank. All right, let's uh, focus back on this, I guess trying to procrastinate. So I want to show you something what I should have done in the beginning when I went to Lowe's to grab a couple sledgehammers. So I should have done something that I did in the beginning here. I got longer bolts and now they stick up past the holes. See those ones, turn on the light in here. You can see the ones are in there where you have to kind of fish them in there. These ones, so much better. Now, they I do have a set that's a little shorter that maybe would just stick up right there, but I kind of like how when I have my hand underneath trying to fandangle this thing, I can just put the bolt right on. So, yeah. I don't know, we'll see. That shorter one might be enough too. But this one's in. That back one was a pain to do. Oh man. All right. I took the super long ones out and I put in the medium ones that I got as well. So they just barely poke out, just enough where I can get a nut right on there without having to guess at it. Oh, I gotta tighten that one up. Uh, I already did the other side. You can see them. They just barely poke out. Got the cover back on. I'm going to tighten up that one right there and put the cover on and then we can put this on its own weight. There's little arms here on the bottom. I've learned that if you loosen these up, that big, there's that, so there's that big nut on the end. If you loosen these up, 
makes it a lot easier for these plates to go on, especially since that one's still a little dented. You can see that little wave like right there, but it's way better than what, is, what it was before. That one's perfectly straight. So I think, uh, I think we almost pretty much got her. Man, does that look mean. It's uh, almost 10 o'clock. We've been working on this way too long. Kind of got distracted by sled cans and whatnot. But uh, tomorrow, it's supposed to be nice for this supposable rainstorm, which I'm not looking forward to. But we still got quite a bit of powder out there that we can rip this thing to. We can rip this thing through and have some fun. So I will button that up and I will see you guys tomorrow. Run pretty good though. Goes through all right. Sorry if I'm a little muffy on in my helmet. Yeah, I think she's definitely a little hot. She also has a sending unit flashing light, so maybe the sending unit's finally starting to go. I don't know. I have her in low, not high, but we'll um, also do a video on the uh, XCR here too while we're out here ripping with the boys. So I'll probably mount this GoPro on my helmet. We'll ride this thing back home so you kind of see that, and we're gonna. Grab the XCR as well. She isn't giving me signs that she's hot, but she's given me, let me show you. I mean, obviously the fan's on, it was just ripping through the field, but there's no, um, coolant light but that flashing gas gauge and the flashing needle uh, tells you that it's a sending unit problem so these 2008s these kind of models are notorious for um, sending units to fail they're kind of like what's in a 
old car gas tank. It has the float built in, the sock, the um, sending unit itself, and underneath the plastic here, it's uh, you unbolt it from the ta actual tank, and you can replace the whole sending unit, or you can replace the um, just the float, whatever. Um, but this one was flashing when I bought it, and it always ran good. I've had, like I said, I've had it for almost uh, probably about half a year now, and I've been ripping it down the road, through fields, stuff like that. And never had a problem till now. Maybe these bigger tracks are now. It needs to rev more. I don't know. But uh, I think uh, we're going to have to do a next video on this, replacing the sending unit. But we're not going to end the video here because I did tell you guys I wanted to try out the XCR triple. And what better day to uh, try that out than do it now. I guess we'll do a kind of everything video today. I've had that sled for a long time. She's never failed me. Gotta get used to this uh, selfie mode. Now you guys get to see my ugly mug a little bit more. <laughs> um, well, today was actually a really fun day. We ripped some sleds around. I got to try at least a four-wheeler before. I believe the sending unit is what's going on that. It's, it will bog down, then all of a sudden it'll wake up for a second, just whop, and then all of a sudden it'll just bleh again. And uh, the gauge is flashing and the gas gauge is flashing on the quad since I bought it, which is, I looked that up and it's saying it is the sending unit issue. So I ordered one of those. Hopefully that comes in the next week or two and we can do a video on that. The XCR, that thing, mint. It's no bog, it's nice and crisp, everything's there, and it seems like it's running really good. It's no skis, I, I can't, I can't say nothing but good things about them. It steers amazing. It handles really well. I can feel everything underneath them. I just, I, I like them. I, I think it convinced me to buy a set of CNA Pros for the phaser. 
so speaking of that we have a lot of projects coming up so if you guys like this stuff and uh, subscribe because we have a phaser build coming as well as a I'd say a snowmobile revival that's actually a really cool sled I've always wanted one we finally found one I'll just do a quick kind of like spoiler the motors locked on it so we're gonna see if we can try to free it up but this is a one owner sled and it is cool uh, we also have the snow traveler which is actually what we're starting next that needs a track rebuild as well as a few other things to get that going so i appreciate you guys uh subscribing and enjoying these videos it uh seeing those comments really make me want to keep making more so all right we got a big storm coming in looks like damaging winds snow rain hopefully it stays snow so i gotta get the generator fired up and running and uh, take care of all that and make sure my family's good. So hopefully I'll see you guys in a few days.